Hi, welcome to the show. This time we're going to talk about Who are you? tax strategies. <laughs> By the way, I'm Bill Fairman. This I'm is Wendy, Wendy Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. We are really smart people in our own mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you know, we're lenders and the government has put in place a lot of tax benefits for owning property. Yeah. They do not give you any benefits for lending money. Not much. So I always say, if you're going to own property, own it with cash. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to lend money, do it through a tax deferred or tax exempt account. Mm -hmm. An IRA, traditional IRAs are uh, tax deferred. Right. Uh, Roth IRAs are tax free. Now you have to pay tax on them when you put the money in, but any money that's earned is uh, free money. tax free. Yeah. So the other thing I like about the Roth IRA, and remember, I am not a tax advisor or an attorney. Check with your own. I just know a lot of really <laughs> smart tax people. <laughs> and yeah, I stayed at, at the Holiday, Holiday Inn Express. Express. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, that said, the, the one of the benefits of a Roth IRA mm -hmm. is that you can uh, hand it down to your heirs and it will live for the let, In let, infamy. Hang on. Let me get really studious here. <laughs> it will actually live for the life of the person that ha has the IRA. Mm -hmm. And then you hand it down to your heirs. It will last as long as the uh, actuarial life of the person you hand it down to. So if you're a grandparent. Yeah. Or a great grandparent. And you hand it down to, mm -hmm. you know, grandkid or a great grandkid, that thing can last through s several generations. It sure can. Now, once you pass away, you can no longer. You don't longer, care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put any more money in it, but it can certainly continue to earn money. You can't put any more money in it when you're dead. <laughs> You mean the heirs can't put words, any more money no in it. In other words, no one can put any further <laughs> contributions in but it. But it can continue to earn. But, but the amount that's in there can continue to earn. Right. Here's another benefit. Your <laughs> beneficiary, as long as the account has been open and active for five years, mm -hmm. can start drawing from it tax-free at any age. That's right. College, here you so go. So you don't have to wait until you're retired to right. start drawing off of this. But that's a, a nice legacy to leave somebody. It really is. So... If you're thinking about investing in a fund that's, let's say it derives most, uh, I would say the vast majority of its income is derived from interest income. So payments on a loan, mm -hmm. you want to do that in your, uh, your IRA, because again, there's no tax benefits uh, to earning money through uh, interest payments. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, and there's there's plenty of them, the other benefit to a fund that allows you to compound over time, let's say, for example, you make a loan in your IRA mm -hmm. and you get monthly payments. What happens to those monthly payments that uh, your IRA is receiving? They sit there doing nothing unless until you are making them earn again, right? Yeah, until you get enough money to make another loan with. That money is sitting there idle in mm -hmm. your account. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a fund that allows you to compound or take that in that earning, that monthly payment that you're receiving, mm -hmm. this will that. allow you to roll it over and continue to increase the balance, take advantage of not only the compound effect, but now that money is constantly working. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing with uh, an individual loan based investment versus in a fund that makes loans is, uh, and I, we've already discussed this before, you're diversified because your but your money is spread out over many loans. Mm -hmm. uh, the individual loan, you know, that's a chunk of change in the one asset. Right. And if that thing goes south for any reason, it doesn't mean you're going to lose money, mm -hmm. but you're certainly not going to make any until you figure out the disposition. Right. Right. Talk about a little bit about the, the UBIT tax that might be due depending on what type of fund it is, whether it's an equity fund, a debt fund, or if it's leveraged. That's <laughs> All right. So we're going to get kind of in the weeds here. There is a tax that you're required to pay for. It's called a, an, if, if you make your IRA a business, mm -hmm. they will tax you on the profit. If your IRA has leverage, they will tax you on the profit. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by, by leverage or, or operating a business? If you're, 
flipping a couple of homes a year and you're doing it with your IRA, that's not really a business. Right. But if you start flipping five, six, seven a year, uh, the IRS may think that you're running a business. You think? That's a lot of work. Yes, it is. <laughs> and they will tax you on that mm -hmm. because you're not supposed to be operating a business in your IRA. You can invest in a business. Right. But you can't have ownership management responsibility. So let's, let's say right in that business, leveraging your account. And what do we mean by that? Let's assume you have a $20,000 balance in your IRA and you want to buy a hundred thousand dollar house. You could use leverage to do that. Mm -hmm. You could get a loan from, there are companies out there that will loan to your IRA. Right. Now they're not, not really. loaning to you. <laughs> They're loaning to your IRA. Your right. IRA is considered an entity, a legal entity. Right. And it has to be what's called non-recourse because the IRA can't benefit you personally. That also means you can't be held personally responsible for a loan made to your IRA. Right. So they call it a non-recourse Which loan. is why a lot of banks don't do that because it's non-recourse. Yeah. They want to be able to make that person personally responsible right. for a loan. Right. So that being said, the IRS, too many IRs in there. <laughs> The IRA doesn't like you being able to take your $20,000 IRA. The IRS doesn't like you to be able That's to take it. Said. You almost did, but not quite. Go ahead. So <laughs> uh, they don't like it when you can take a $20,000 IRA and use leverage to turn it into a $100,000 value right away. Right. And that's what you're doing. If you borrow $80,000 and you use your $20,000 IRA as the down payment. Right. They call that leverage. So they're going to hit you with a pretty high tax. I think it's like 45%, mm. but it's 45% of the profit earned. So there are some good strategies that you can use. And again, you're, you're really getting into the weeds here for a, a short uh, right. little video for this. But if you do own property in your IRA, which I already told you, you shouldn't, <laughs> you should just make <laughs> loans. You can, and the reason for this is the government gives you tax advantages to own the property. And if Use you're them. using your IRA mm -hmm. to own the property with in a tax deferred or a tax exempt account, you can, you're not taking advantage of the tax advantage that the government gives you. It's like not putting the whipped cream on the ice right. cream but and the cherry. If, <laughs> if you utilize leverage and they're going to charge you a tax on the profit, you can at that point take the depreciation that they allow you mm. and offset the tax they're going to charge you for the UBIT. Now right. there's nothing wrong with paying UBIT tax. <laughs> don't, don't, likes don't let people scare you about that. Yeah. Yes, it can be 40, 45% of the profit, but re remember this, it's on the profit. The profit is what? The cash flow. If you're making, $200 a month cash flow. You're paying 45% and of that. And you're also able to depreciate some of that. That's true. You're only talking about a little bit of money, a little bit of tax, a little teeny bit of tax. And what happens with the house? House goes up in value over time because right. it appreciates. Right. Someone else is making your payment. So you're paying this loan down. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's right. Hopefully. Right. And you're paying for a loan with dollars that are going to be worth less down the road. That's right. So as the value of the prop, sorry, I can't tell whether you can see my hands or not. <laughs> and I like talking to my hands. I can see them. They look great. So <laughs> the value of the property is going up. Somebody else is paying down the payments mm -hmm. and they're paying it with something that's worth less than it was when it started. That's right. So leverage can be good. And even if you are paying you, uh, but, it's going to be a small amount. Again, I'm not a tax professional. I don't work for the IRS. Consult with your own professionals and they, on these. They wouldn't let you work for them. Yes, because <laughs> I explain too much. <laughs> but th those are some uh, good tax strategies to use when you're using funds or when you're doing individual loans. That's right. And you know, there's a lot of information out there that you can pick up on. And there's so many other ways that you can learn about self-directed IRAs. There's some great companies out there that we know, like, and trust people yep. that are friends of ours. Quest IRA or Quest Trust now. Cama Plan is one. American. American IRA, IRA Services, Rocket Dollar. Yep. 
Equity Trust Company has some great things educational wise as well. All of them on their website have uh, education. On yeah. Them. So sign up, go to their websites, sign up for their newsletters, their seminars, the webinars that they do. You can learn so much. It's just like Thanksgiving at our house. That it's, is. It's my turn, my there, turn. There's five siblings. We're all <laughs> trying to get a word in edgeways. So Coming up. there's only about 5% of the actual population that has even heard of a self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. Most people understand that there are IRAs. Most people are familiar with 401ks, but most self-directed IRAs are not truly self-directed IRAs. If you have an IRA with a managed account, mm -hmm. and I'm talking to your, your brokerage houses, your Vanguard, your Fidelity. e trades Fidelity, yeah. those people are managing that account. And while they call it self-directed, they're giving you a basket of four or five, yeah. maybe six different Here, you can pick uh, from these stocks you mm -hmm. can pick from or funds you can pick from. That, that's not self-directed. Self-directed is truly you can invest in anything you want other than art and collectibles. Right. 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 And if you know real estate more than you know the stock market, wouldn't you prefer to invest your money in something that you know right. versus something that you don't? And something that can, it, it can go away when the stocks drop, yeah. you know, they're gone. In real estate, you at least have collateral, right? Yep. Yep. So uh, Google self-directed IRA custodians. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've yes. named off a few. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many more that are really Learn about them. They're, uh, they're awesome to have. You can self-direct a Coverdale account, which is a, a college account. Right? Health savings account. Yeah. Savings accounts can be self-directed. What else? The education savings account, which is really what you were what talking about. The, the, cover, <laughs> the Coverdale. The it's amazing. Case. If you're self-employed and you have no employees other than your spouse, mm. your spouse counts, you can have a, <laughs> what's called a self-directed solo 401k. Mm -hmm. And it acts like many other 401ks, except for you can do even more. And if you're over 50, you can put up to 50 right now, up to $59,000 away each year. It's a lot of money. A regular IRA is going to be limited to 55 and 65,000. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how old you are. Yeah. Uh, that's an awesome benefit. Uh, there's some good books out there on that as well. Uh, if you would uh, shoot us some information on yourself, we'll be happy to send out uh, oh, yeah. information. As a matter of fact, we'll, uh, we'll put a link into the uh, video on some good books on solo. That's a great games. idea. How's That's that? a great idea. All right. So I'm done with some tax strategies. I know there's many more, but again, I only played one on TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a tax strategy. Uh, yeah. Tax strategist. <laughs> yeah. So I'm limited with what I can tell you. That's right. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Don't forget to subscribe and like and us. Like us. Mm -hmm. And if you like, even more videos. Yeah. You can check them out. They might in, be up there. They might be too. over here. It might be down here. Don't forget our website, carolinahardmoney.com, carolinahardmoney.com. Tell all your friends. Thanks so much. Hi, if you really like this show, what you can do is you can check out some of our other shows that might or might not pertain to it. You can check up there. You can check over here. You can check down here. Check it out. Don't, be afraid to like us, right? Subscribe. <laughs> do that too. Subscribe to our page and hit like. We'd love to have you do that. Thanks.